So, here we are. Thank you for checking out and contributing to this project. Without needing to say much, after you've finished the experience that is watching this movie, please tell others about it and invite them to experience it for themselves. Contribute at the GoFundMe page if you really enjoyed it, and leave your thoughts and comments below us on what this movie means for you. Needless to say, I look forward to sharing and creating more together. Good job, team. Namaste. Is this like a dream? This is always like a dream. It's just a matter of whether or not we're awake. Welcome, young traveler. We've been waiting for you. You've been waiting for me? Who are you? The more immediate question is, who are you? This is a portal to your awakening, to your remembering all that you are, and all that you are not. With you. Ask others. They have much to teach you about it and yourself. Now go, young traveler. Begin your journey. What do you have to say? So it is. Let go of resistance and surrender to the flow. The universe has much to teach us. Oh yeah. Good girl. Should be recording. I hope this works. My name's Brendan. I've been making videos and putting things on YouTube and telling stories and trying to capture the part of the bigger story that is happening here on Earth in, in all of us. I woke up not too long ago. I don't know how long I've been here. It's some sort of festival, some sort of celebration, some sort of place where people artists and musicians can come and express themselves and, and do it without inhibitions and I'm not entirely sure whether or not this is a dream. Things still feel a little bit cloudy. So, contact. Right. Create contact with your hands. Hold it firmly. This is where your power comes from. This is where your grip comes from. I'm just finding like, balance within one object. <laughs> this is what I want you to be able to work on. 
And if this is a distraction for you, then you shouldn't be doing this. There's a lot of faces that I recognize, but I'm not sure if I've seen them before. So I'm gonna go around. I'm not exactly sure when this is gonna end, when this dream will end. All I know is that I wanna be able to honor it. I wanna be able to share what happens here with you and to experience it for myself as well. There's a lot of people here. There's a lot that's already going on. There's a lot that I know I can learn. There's a lot that I know I can share. And uh, fortunately, I do have my cameras on me, but I know not all of it will happen on camera. Tell me more about the mysteries of the universe. There's much for me to learn. Tabula rasa. First festival? No, what do you think of them? It's pretty cool, eh? Yeah? Do you have like a favorite thing? Yeah. What's that? It's running around, playing. Yeah, I just do everything, right? Do you meditate? No. Okay. Are you like, do you any ninja stuff? Sort of. That's good. Ninja stuff is good. That's what I'm doing. Doing ninja stuff, so. Do you meditate? Yeah, I meditate. It's a good idea to meditate, especially if you start when you're young. I it's like meditate. it's like sharpening your sword. Think of it that way. So I mean, this is a wood yeah, one, obviously. That's a Check it out. If you hit someone with this in the gym, it hurts yeah. so bad. Yeah, I probably would. <laughs> All right, man. Have fun. Cheers. I'm a storyteller story creator, a seeker. Time doesn't really seem to exist in the same way here. This festival is a place for people to express themselves, to be able to connect with one another, to be able to see the oneness that we all are. And that's something that I myself am coming into. There's a greater story. The story that we're all a part of. The story of awakening of consciousness. Which is why I think a lot of people are here why a lot of people have been drawn to this one spot. They felt a calling, an urge, a desire to take part in this co-creation, in this celebration. And I think that's why I'm here too. I think it's because we all have a piece of the puzzle. We all have a part to the story. And though we may not know it at the time, the best thing we can do is just allow the flow to naturally occur. And by the end of it all, We'll understand. We'll understand that there will always be more questions. So I'm gonna do my thing. I'm just gonna embrace this. I'm just gonna take in these moments that simply won't last forever. And do my best to share them with you. Because I'm sure there's a message here that will inspire you to inspire other people to remind you that you're not alone, that you're not the only one seeking. How's it going, bro? Got a question for you. Yeah. Uh, you know what this is? Any idea? It's a seed. It's many seeds. It's like full of all seeds in here, pine cone. you it's all just it's just a symbol right all the patterns the fractals the universe the universe and a little seed it's a pine cone yes or is it, what, what kind of cone is it it's pine is it yeah what kind of pine cosmic cosmic, cosmic pine, pine. Yeah. Cosmic pineal pine. yeah it's a pineal cone pineal cone yeah <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot to learn from it, I'm guessing. Still figuring it out. Figured itself out a long time ago. <laughs>
It's got you all figured out, that's for sure. <laughs> my journey will go where my intuition guides me. Someone gave me some good advice. They told me to follow that which inspires me. So that's what I'm gonna do. And where I go is beyond space and time. Does anybody know Sadu? Like it's a it's a basic training game, simple, but like all it is gentle touch on the chin. So it's just like nice simple blocks and stuff like that, and just like and that's it, that's it. So I mean like no one gets hurt and so This is? What is this? I believe it's a pine cone. Yeah. It's a seed for a pine tree. It's a piece of sacred geometry. It's the entire world. All in that? The All pine cone? In this? Really? It's the instructions for growing a tree. Yeah, I mean, if it's a hologram of all things, then it's the whole world. That's or, pretty neat. Or, you know, if, if you don't believe in that, it's just a silly little pine cone. Yeah. I like to think it's both. <laughs> cool, man. Thanks. Thank you. That helps. This dream is not what I could have expected. But at the same time, it's so synchronistic. <sighs> there she is. I feel as if I'm here to learn something. Everybody here, everybody here has something to teach me. Everybody here is a reflection of myself in some way. So just uh, taking a bit of a break and recharging on some coconut water. For my good friend Ra here, who I met previously in another dream. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Even if this is just a dream, it still say it's really good. Oh, you have no idea how delicious this tastes. Unless you're like drinking it and experiencing it for yourself. Alright, so. I know that this is just a dream and everything, but I mean, this is what I'm used to, talking to the camera, telling the story, and uh, sharing with you guys what's happening, and uh, that's what I'm gonna do, so, hey look.
ask you a quick question? Yes. Quick question. Do you uh, do you know what this thing is? That is a pine cone. Yeah. And? Tell me about it. Is it a trick question? It's a hypothetical, philosophical, <laughs> metaphysical question. All right. Well, that could go on like it could be a long conversation. So, of course, it's a pine cone uh, from conifers. It's how they spread their seeds. Some of them come from fire-dependent communities, and they only pop open when they get really hot. And I kind of think that's a metaphor for the pineal gland, same thing. For a lot of people, that won't really open up until they're like under some kind of like major stressful, transformative inspiration. <laughs> that's what I have to say about that. Cool, man. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. All right, have a good Hey, you guys are pretty good. Is this a dream right now? Yes, of course it is. Is it really? Of course. Okay. Why would it be anything else? Can you tell me like more about it? Like I'm new here. The dream? Yeah. Well, it depends. How's your lucidity? I'm working towards lucidity. Do you realize that you're in the dream? Are you awake within your dream? I, I try to double check every now and then. Double check? How do you double check? Uh, subject, object, location. Oh yeah? That's one way of doing it. Yeah, uh, yeah. What do you suggest? Um, I like to test gravity. Yeah? Yeah. So, like, can you fly away right now? Of course. Okay. Go ahead. Just... Oh, she's gone. Where'd she go? <laughs> it's so beautiful. We're all collectively ascending together, man. I love that word ascension. I love transcending dualities, yes? So, when we learn to do this within, man, we learn to do this without also. We, we learn to nurture relationships with other people to help them do it well too, because it's a practice, man. It's the ancient symbol of the Ouroboros, being and becoming, right? The serpent or the snake eating of its own tail. Self-regeneration, baby, eternal life, there is no death. I've been carrying this around. People have been asking me, or I've been asking them rather, what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm trying to remember it. I think it's a... Uh, like the key to the universe or something. Well, the first trigger word was try. As, as Yoda says, do or do not, there is no try. It's pineal gland. Yes, yeah, pineal gland, man. The pine cone pine is cone. a great metaphor for the pineal, right? Which is in the center of the brain, right about here, the core of our brain. And in this pineal gland, we excrete a chemical called DMT. And what does that DMT do? Well, it's a bit of a spirit guide, right? It opens us up to the other side, as we call it, the spirit realm. Well, there are those of us who walk between realms, call us alchemists, right? Our goal is not to attain some eternal state of nirvana. No, that exists and we're free to, to go there, yes, but we travel freely, right? So it's not about being somewhere eternally, no. It's, uh, I am free to travel through all realms as I choose. Right on. Thank you, bro. Here, Wolf Shield. Wolf Shield. Yeah. It's a cool name, bro. Thanks, dude. Here, I'll show you a special handshake, too. Go like this. Oh, no. Hold on. No, no, no. Like this. 45 degree. Open your fingers. It's got like the helix and stuff to it, man. Yeah, it's digging it, dude. Very mutual. It's like yeah. a soul shake. It works. Right on, man. Doing that one for right. years, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right on, man. Cool. All right, Bye, thanks, brother. Scotty. It's all love, man. Each and every one of us is a separate circle on this flower of life, on this grid that we create through the relationships that we share with one another. That Vesica Pisces, that little thing that looks like this between the two circles, that is the womb of creation. That is the space in which new ideas, new energies, new life emerges from. So by allowing our circles to merge with one another, we allow the opportunity for more creativity to be birthed into this world in exciting, vibrant, and unique ways. You say Roomba? Roomba! If you were in Puerto Rico and you were doing something like this, they would call it Bomba! Bomba! In Guinea, West Africa, where this drum is from, they call it Dudumwa! Dudumwa! In Hawaii, they call it Luau! And us, the Native American people, we call it powwow.
But you know what it is the same about rumba and bumba and dudua and lua? It is not just about the drum and the dancers and the food. It's about what the people create. You see, the people create a sacred space, a space where everyone feels loved and nobody feels just. So we can do that today. Everybody put your hand in front of your mouth like this. Say the word judgment. judgment. Take it and throw it out. Woo! This is a judgment to result. I bring the drum circle to all of the people because um, the drum really brings culture. It brings a way of uniting people beyond any of the things that separate us. So it brings us together even though we have diversity. And in the, in the drum circle, that diversity is celebrated. So the identity of all the individuals, all their struggles, all their victories, all those things are manifested through the rhythm that they play in the time that they play it. So it's an amazing experience, and I always like to say that, that the drum circle is perfect for the time in which it's played. Because all of the feelings, all of the emotions, all of our lives connect in a way that, that can't be any other way. I mean, it's just a beautiful thing, and it's really the oldest mind-body wellness activity. You know, music doesn't put food on our table, it doesn't put a roof over our head, but it does something for our minds, it does something for our body, it creates sense of wellness, camaraderie, and spirituality beyond religion. And it's beautiful. Uniting the tribes, remember one mark at a time, ready? Uniting the tribes, one mark at a time. I can't hear you. Uniting the tribes, nice. one, one mark at a time. time. One more time. Uniting the tribes, you what does what does this festival mean to you well it means we could be here for days but maybe in a brief summary I would say that this is the advanced spirit army that's pushing through the shift uh, into the next paradigm and actually the old paradigm has already ended and a lot of people don't know it the era of winners and losers is gone we're into a, a new paradigm of winners and winners and it's obvious all around us, but uh, this is kind of the advanced group that's, uh, that's causing the shift to happen. That's what it means to me. Take me to the station. You know, it's true. Look around you. It couldn't be anything but that. which is uh, proving that the electromagnetic field of the human heart is in communication with the electromagnetic field of the planet. And what their research seems to be showing is that our emotional states get encoded into our individual field, and that field is communicating with all other fields, including planetary fields. So what we do in our performance is basically is bring everybody into a what they call coherent state, bringing the heart and mind together with feelings of love, gratitude, uh, those are the top two. And uh, with that collectively, which is what all the transformational festivals are doing, literally transforming the energetic field, which some people call the grid on this planet. So that's what we're about, just joining the rest of the party of people doing it.
does this festival mean to you? What does it mean to me? Everybody's, yeah. everybody's joyous and happy and wanting to not only bring this here and bring the light here, but bring it out to the world. See that intention a lot here. That's really inspiring. I mean, this is how stuff gets done. That's what's happening right here. This is, uh, yeah, it's not just a festival. It's a, it's a key to a new world. I heard a uh, rumor going around is that this is a dream. Well, of course it is. Of course it is. <laughs> but anything you can do in a sleeping dream, you can do in this dream also. It's, uh, you get many clues from nature. That's, yeah. That's a beautiful one because we create our sleeping dreams so meticulously. We can do the same thing in this life. And that's what we're doing right now. We've created this dream together. Are you a Jedi? In training. In training? Yes. In training. We are all Jedis in training, right? Yes. As often as possible. Right on, man. What'd you come here to learn? True balance in the Force. Yeah? How's that going? Well, the Sith, uh, the dark side is powerful, you know, and it's just trying to find balance and stay on the path as often as possible, but true power lies with a little bit of both. That's right, man. Moderation, key to everything in life. True that, man. How's it going, man? What's up? Man? How's it going? Dude, it's going, dude. Are you a dreamer? Oh, you could say that. Yeah? Some may say that I'm a dreamer. <laughs> I'm not the only one. <laughs> when people really start to wake up. So, I mean, without really having to, like, you know, tell you what to say, I really just want you to use this opportunity to, like, tell the people, like, what this festival's about. And, uh, yeah, like, I'd like to be able to, uh, without just being like, oh, you know, this is a festival, like, bring in your own philosophy of, like, lucid dreaming and, and how, like, what does it mean to become awake within the dream? Like, how do we know if we're awake, right? And you to me, lucid dreaming is when you become aware of the fact that you're dreaming while you're dreaming, while in the dream. And the beauty of like waking up to the fact that you're in a dream, it, the outcome or the impact of that is that you, know, you realize that you, you can do anything you want. You are uh, ultimate creator. Um, you know, in, in a lucid dream state, you can fly, you can walk through walls, you can shoot spider webs out of your hands like Spider-Man and soar through the sky, you know. But also the, the other beauty of, of becoming awake in your dream is, is you realize that everything is in your reality is a reflection of yourself. And so just like you can become awake in your dream, you can also like awaken in your waking state. When you become lucid in your waking state, you can let go of fear, you can create that which you want to see in the world. It's really an empowering thing, you know? You don't have to be con confined by all of the boundaries and constructs and stories that society wants to place on you. Um, and you can realize that the world is much more malleable than it, it seems, you know? You can fall in a, into alignment with your passions and, and create the world that you want to see. I, I kind of love that philosophy, and it's sort of what the foundation of the whole festival, Lucidity, um, was built on, um, is that this idea that we can wake up to our highest potential and fall into alignment with our passions, and by doing that in collaboration with other people who are also either awakened or in a process of awakening, um, 
a lot of magic can happen. And what you see around the festival here is sort of like a, a manifestation of that collective magic that happens through the process of waking up to this dreamlike reality that we live in. What we create is a container. And within this container, there's an invitation. And the invitation is to express yourself in whatever way you want to express yourself and be whoever it is that you want to be. And so you've got people letting go of those things that don't serve them, um, leaving them at home or in the parking lot and coming up here and, and just engaging in an experience that is very opening to possibilities. The impact of that is, is quite profound. Even though it's a short period of time, people leave with an understanding that there is a greater possibility for life in general. What's your favorite part about this, these, uh, these types of festivals? Oh, the people, the energy. It's, it's like we are in the fifth dimension right here, right now. This is about the, the pyramids and of Giza. And it's, it's, it represents the Trinity. The large one represents the sun, Amen Ra. The, the, the middle one represents Gaia and Isis. Mother Earth, and the third one represents the moon, which is, which is the child. From the moon being the moon, the, the duality, which is like light and the dark side of the moon, which is our ego. We, need, we have to let go of our ego to go back to Gaia, Isis, to Mother Earth, the nature. Through the nature we can go back to the sun and be one again. Appreciate what you do, brother. Thank you. trick to awakening or to know that you're dreaming in the first place to know that you're dreaming what an awesome question I mean this yeah. is a dream is it not yeah this is a dream <laughs> <laughs> I guess the dream is what you tell yourself is a dream it's multiple realities this is one. only one. <laughs> it's one hell of a dream then. Yeah. Cool. Hop on. What's your name? Uh, you can call me Wolf Shield. Wolf Shield. Yeah. Damiana.
there. You here to watch the sunrise? Yeah, you too? Yes, I am. Coming up, there's a spot for you here. So I've seen you around at the festival a few times as I was walking around and noticed you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, doing my thing. Doing what I can to check in with the others who are in their own process of awakening. It's going well. Each day there's more and more of us who are starting to get it, right? Starting to uh, see the unity within all things. It's a beautiful thing to be surrounded by people like that. Be surrounded by people who are waking up. And be there for them, with them. To help them in their process as they help us. You know, a lot of us... A lot of us have forgotten. Forgotten how long we've been on this journey. Forgotten that we've come from somewhere else. Higher dimensions, spiritual realms, whatever you want to call it. And this reality is one that we created for ourselves. Thing everyone should know is how to recall your dreams and the importance of the recall process. Um, most practicing dreamers have a dream diary of some kind and the act of writing in your dream diary is powerful for your future dreams. These two worlds, we're in both of them all the time. But we, they overlap when we experience, we can kind of go through the different ones. There's certain things about the outside world that cannot change, it's always it has a stability, it has rules, like the chessboard. Dreams are inner world experiences. Our, what's happening in the outer world is we're laying in bed, but the, the world we create is this inner world based on symbols and beliefs. So when you wake up in the morning, all you can recall is your short-term memory. The other reason is, the moment that you get lucid, all you have to deal with is your short-term memory. That's how long you get. You should predetermine what you want to accomplish when you're in a dream. Like, so even right now, like what do you want to experience the next time you're in a lucid dream? What would you really like to do that could benefit your life? So it becomes like a daytime contemplation. And it's a, it's a and also when you become lucid, you can actively do that. Um, does anybody know why the umbrella is here? Because it's out of place. It's out of place. So hopefully it triggered your mind to think of doing a reality test. And if it doesn't, this is a good example. Because it's out of place. And uh, I don't know why it's here either. Hey man, what's, what's the trick to good balance? Uh, time. Finding your, finding your center, I guess. I don't know. Putting the hours in. 
anybody can find, anybody can do it or find their center if you spend enough time with it, I think. Yeah. Time and energy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But once you get it, you got it, man. It's amazing. It's an, it's an amazing feeling. I, yeah. I'm addicted. And in, in a lot of ways, we all got it. Just like remembering how to do it, right? For sure. Totally. Totally, man. There. Can you can you still hear me? This thing's kind of broken. Okay, cool. All right, God, I'm uh, I'm holding on to this thing. It's uh, basically I've been going around asking people what it is. They've been using the word pine cone, um, and I, I've just been looking to learn more about it. I'm wondering if you can tell me a bit more about it, like what it is, like kind of the bigger picture, I guess you could say. To me, the pine cone represent represents the third eye, the sacred geometry found within everything spiral fractal universe, the toroidal field. Seeds. Trees. The majority of it is comprised seemingly of little seeds. You know, it's so abundant. Just its natural ability to give one pine cone can seed vast areas, provide a lot of different trees, a lot of opportunity for growth in, in just the one. That could uh, lead you to the mothership. You can manifest whatever you want at this very instant. Believe. Put your love into it. This pine cone here, well, it's a sacred esoteric symbol from all over the world in ancient cultures. Symbolic, fractal representation of all that is perfect and gorgeous. It is a, it is a seed, it is a beginning, it is pattern, it is, it is a simplicity, and yet a complexity. It's got some Fibonacci numbers in there. Fibonacci spirals, spiral in the center, the seed, 
that carries the future of a tree growing up many feet towards the sky, rooted down many, many feet into the ground. A little world in and of itself, something like that. It's a very sacred symbol we have here, and I think what it symbolizes is sort of taking our energy from our root and kind of moving it upward and getting past all these blocks we have through the root and the sacral and the solar plexus of our issues with who we are, where we are, how secure we are, open up into that hard space, speak our truth, and then finally be able to admit and embody that we see everything, we are everything. To me, I'm still learning, I know that. But yes, it is a microcosm of the macrocosm. It is a material representation of sacred geometry portions which unfold all throughout reality that keep things in check and allow things to expand in beautiful, vibrant ways. The interconnectedness, the, the invisible grid, the, the lattice that connects us all to the crystals and the mycelium and the cells and the planets, the, the sacred geometry that our bodies and the universe are all operating under. Sacred geometry just makes sense. Cool. So by sharing what I already have, I'll get more in return? Whoa, that's deep, man. All right, okay, thanks, God. I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. All right, have fun. See you, God, bud. There's so much around us at all times that is not to be understood, but is simply to be appreciated. Awe is much more important than understanding. Do I need to understand how a pine cone is created, how it does it? No. It, at best, I can marvel at whatever principles made it come to be, and that I am a part of the same system that created it. It is representation for the growth that all of us are going through as we continue to spiral outwards. We contract and we expand. We, as consciousness, are ourselves, the breath of the universe. We are constantly dreaming and awakening, forgetting and remembering all the time. The seed is a representation of the fact that the entire tree exists within one single pine cone. In the same way that the entire experience of the universe exists within one single one of us is all infinitely connected. Hey, Mother Goddess. <laughs> Hi. I've been, uh, I've been journeying a lot. Just meeting people. Yeah, asking them about this bad boy. Has anyone done this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be a common action. I ran into Nathaniel. You ran into Nathaniel? Yeah, he was the one who did that. Ah, it's beautiful. <laughs> I know, it's fun. Uh, it's amazing that just by focusing on it, You're, so you're stuck here babysitting. This. I'm not stuck here. I have the pleasure of hanging out with that him. That is right true, now. very true, yeah. He's really a miraculous being. He doesn't use words very much, but he communicates telepathically really strongly. I just know instantly what he needs. He doesn't even really have to gesture for it. And he's like, yeah. And he's really playful. He loves dancing and like rolling around and stuff and just being goofy. <laughs> and I'm excited to see who he grows up to be. Holy God! Yeah. <laughs> and I love set. hanging out with children because they are such teachers. I learn so much from them. Yeah, they teach us a lot. Oh, look at him! He's so precious. Are you ready for a nap time? Oh, okay. It's well, to get enough sleep. I'll let you guys get your rest. Okay. Enjoy your time.
snarf, snarf. <laughs> Message for the other dreamers out there. <laughs> you just gotta wake up every day and remember that you're here, you're, you can always be here, and you can always find this space, and it's always so good. And there's the motivation to just do more and better every time. What are, uh, what are we remembering? Right now, I'm remembering that. Oh, wow! It's kind of that like octopus? A live oh, it's yeah. Take that all in right now. I remember that guy. But it's a memory. It's remembering the dream. Remembering the dream? Yeah. Remembering to can't, keep dreaming. You can't forget the dream. I mean, sometimes you wake up and you don't remember your dreams, and you just gotta remember that they're always there. It's the next beautiful level. That's why we gotta remember this dream, right? One yeah. breath away. Yeah. There you it's go. this breath if you take it. like bringing your daughter to this festival? It's awesome. It's like seeing it through a child's eyes again, which is the best part of life. It's all worth it. <laughs> yeah, when you see them having fun, kind of, you know, make no excuses for yourself, right? If they're enjoying yeah, it, then... kind of less inhibitions and um, more imagination, <laughs> joyful. It's, fun. it's good seeing her enjoy it, especially. It makes it... 100% better. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, about this festival that like mainstream culture considers to be like weird and stuff like that and, and why do they find it weird well weird is a funny word weird for me reflects fear weird unfamiliar strange bizarre yeah not me not the me other, it's like yeah. it's weird is a, a word that pushes something away right when you push something away you deny that it is you celebrate in many different ways you know there's like this festival other festivals there's gathering inside the cities there's you know community are being generated it's all happening <laughs> Celebration is a great way for people to to cement, to marinate, to integrate, to seal in, to seal in what we have, the work that we've done, the the journeys, the self discoveries, the inner work that we've done, and we can all come together collectively and see each other as what we are, which confirms and cements to each other what we are. And, and I think that, you know, you mentioned the word uh, integration. Yeah. And so, really, these are kind of the, the highlights of the, of, the, of the transformation that we're going through. It's integration and integrity. Right? Integration is, and integrity, because integration that's happening with integrity uh, create, creates a network. 
that has integrity. And if the entire network has integrity, then we're, you know we're in a really good shape. There's a whole bunch of people who are all carrying the, the, a singular vibration, the vibration of all that is. And when all of us come together with our individual expressions of that one vibration, we get drumming. <laughs> Uh, what's your experience been so far in this dream? This one? Yeah, this one. To be attached. Wait, hold on. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, like what other message might you have for the other dreamers who uh, who aren't here themselves? Check in with yourself. Keep like a good relationship with the temple so that you can come out and like dance in the big, big, big field with everybody. That's my experience. Have fun, right? Yeah, have fun. The ability to have fun at any moment. That's important. By being grounded in yourself. For sure. Cool. Off. Whoa. Well, I'm impressed. <laughs> Sir, what 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 are you here to bring to this festival? Oh, mustache love and strongman power. Oh, that's right. The world does need more of that. So. Any uh, message out there for the people not wearing mustaches? You must grow mustache to green power. <laughs> Some deep ancient mystic knowledge right there. <laughs> Alright, thanks man. Keep it up. So like, what does a festival like this mean to you? What does it mean to you? It means... No, to you. Oh. <laughs> right? It means to that them. we can share this yeah. with you. This it means here. that we can share this it's with you. you. Yeah. With you. And we can yeah. share this with me. Who am I? Nothing but what you see in front of you. And often I want to go run over to other countries and other places and just like get in there and help find solutions. And the wisdom came to me that I need to start right here. And first and foremost, I need to align myself, be strong, you know, be prepared, take care of myself, be conscious of every movement, every step. How do I use my water resources? You know, how am I aligned in my community, in my relationships? That's the only way to global peace. Global peace is not going to come because legions and legions of people go and take care of situations. That's a really beautiful vision that I had at one time that I now realize isn't the pathway. The pathway is here first. The Chinese have a proverb, if everyone swept in front of their own door, the whole world would be clean. The best thing I can do to empower someone else is to empower myself and to make choices that reflect that empowerment and walk through the world with impeccability of every choice has rippling impacts. So how am I choosing my steps and what does that affect? And then connecting with other like-minded beings, my <laughs> brothers and sisters, the most amazing people in the world that I have met on this path that are literally my brothers and sisters that I would literally give my life to. Not for, I keep that. But my life to, I would devote. We're in devotion as brothers and sisters. And the best thing we could do is support each other. 
instead of disconnecting and saying, oh dear God, this is not me, this is the scariest thing in the world, I never want to be this, you think, holy shit, this is who I am on some level. This is a part of me. Just like this world and this, you know, I mean, this tree above us has all these different parts. It's got branches and limbs and leaves and roots. So we are all of these different things. There is a part of me that loves, but there's also a part of me that steals and deceives and tricks and lies and wants to kill and destroy. But you know what? When I make relationship with that part of myself, that part of myself goes out and it plays with the other things in this world that want to trick and deceive and kill me. And we help underneath this. When I talk about love and light, our core one is love and light and making things healthy. Health, happiness, abundance. And yet, we're not always there. You guys know, right? Just having a positive attitude doesn't necessarily make it so. So I would love to hear from each of you as distilled as we can make it, a sentence, a few words, whatever feels right, of what rites of passage has been or what you want it to be in your life. Like, um, we can create a rite of passage at any moment, at any time. We can step through a portal any time we want, access a different part of ourselves. but to actually trust that I actually did embody that experience, whatever I've gone through, um, yes, I went on a vision quest that was real and I got what I needed from it and not to discount it later or while I'm going through it, kind of head trip it and be like, is this really happening? Are aliens talking to me? Is the earth speaking to me? And to actually trust that yes, whatever my real experience is, it doesn't matter if it's happening in my head or I'm feeling it in my body, that it's real and that we are multi-dimensional, so real is up to me, real is up to us. Acceptance of your fears, definitely, and, and acceptance that the only thing that you can control is yourself. Um, and that's helped me with my own fears, is like, these outside obstacles that I'm afraid of, I can't control those, but I can control myself, so. I think rites of passage is being able to, you know, take control of yourself in situ different situations like we talked about and then moving to that next level, accepting it and working through it. To me it's um it's when for me directly, when I encounter a fear within myself, a darkness that I'm struggling with challenge to accept and when I have to dig deeper than I've dug before to find the courage to be able to face that and each one of those events when I have to go just that little bit further and to overcome something a little bit larger is another rite of passage yeah uh, it's, uh, one thing that just comes to mind for me um, one way I look at it is that like every great challenge is just training for the next one. So, you know, like we're always we're always practicing for like that next thing that's ahead of us. Like life life itself isn't really like a bully, right? Like life always does have our best interests in mind and it will teach us the hard lessons when we need to be taught the hard lessons, right? But just understanding that they are lessons in the first place is like what helps shift our paradigm as to how we approach it. And rather than being like, oh, you know, I'm a victim of circumstance, it's like I have the opportunity to create something new within this moment. So, um, yeah, that was just one thing. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, 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 I'm good. You good? I believe so. Alright, so we're gonna do some sound healing. Let's see where this takes me. When people are open to receiving sound, sound is able to travel through our bodies, and open us up, just relieve a lot of stress and pain and fear and tension and things we just hold on to can be relieved into sound. If we allow ourselves to open up to the sound and receive it, we can actually travel through our bodies and heal us.
I heard there's a rumor that like everything is created by sound and vibration and stuff like that. It seems like that would make a lot of sense to me. <laughs> it affects us all in different ways, but it seems like when we're open to receiving the sound is when it does it really has the power to do its work, you know. It's really about being open to receiving. Cool. Because it's not the sound alone that does the work. It's it's us that does the work. It's self healing. For sure. That's the key. Cool man, cool. You're healing yourself. Uh, well, <laughs> let me say let me say thank you. So. Thank you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, right on, man. Appreciate it. Sharon, yeah. Hey, man. Mind if I ask you how that was for you? It was beautiful. How beautiful was it? It was transcending and uh, enlightening and refreshing and rekindling my aura. I think was my favorite part about it. Um, I feel like my aura was was rekindled and rejuvenated. So, yeah. infamous crystal skulls? This is one of the originals. Yeah. This was found in Africa. So it, it, it's a totally different uh, totally different background than the ones that found in Mexico. What do you think it means? The fact that this it exists. This has to do with the sacred feminine. And it's known as the sacred feminine. And the sacred feminine energy is coming into the world now. The, the masculine energy of greed, power, and money for control, that's fading out now. And the new energy of, of the sacred feminine is coming in, of nurturing and loving each other. I mean, look around you. Look around you. It's all happening right here. You know, we're the vanguard. We're the beginning. But we're growing in numbers. We're getting bigger and bigger. I heard the idea that crystals can kind of store memory in them. Our kinda. whole electronic age is based on quartz crystal. Silicon Valley. These are silicon dioxide. This is the silicon that energizes our whole information. So you think you think this skull maybe has some like memories that it's connected with? Oh yeah. I, I can it, this this can store all the information in the world in one crystal skull. There's so much quartz there, and with a map like this on the map, this is definitely a defining point. That this is a reference to something that I haven't uh, I haven't found out yet. I don't know. You think that's like but a? It's, it's iron oxide. And it was trapped between two layers of quartz. There's one layer right here, there's another layer right here, and there's another layer right here. There's three layers. Can I just like hold my hand above it? Yeah, that's fine. You should feel heat too. Yeah, I can feel something. Pull it back. When you get when you feel that, it'll come back with you. You know, back up real slow. And it'll the heat will follow you. I uh, I resonate with skulls. Like the whole idea that, you know, people think skulls, they think death, but it's also like rebirth. Well, when I was ignorant, I thought that. I didn't know any better. Yeah. But it's information, you know. Besides, death is a, is a, is a relative term. People walk around dead. <laughs> yeah. People walk around to sleep. I think that's. Yeah. Yeah. So, how do we wake but up? This is the way to wake up. Meditate on, on, uh, on this skull, and she'll open your chakras get your kundalini energy flowing through you and you'll wake up. But it's a process that takes time. <laughs> cool. You got uh, some rhymes to share in theme with the times? Theme with the times? For sure. I mean, hmm. the most relevant one is always the this is kind of what the festival makes me feel. 
Erase the granite and turf, embrace the planet of Earth. Some greenery and scenery is sadly damaged and burnt by fake dudes with fake food, rudely robbing the dirt. This corporate dominance is ominous, a prominent curse, but patient plot and search. The middle path will solve this riddle fast, sifting through the fiddled facts, we're filling in the little gaps. Still relaxed, serving civil acts, spilling raps and killing snacks, adapting to the task of those fracked acts, so we seek truth. Plant seeds of revival and let our heart song sing like a needle on vinyl. We are designed by divine to revive the mystics. Prompt our tribes to align and defy statistics. I could not believe my eyes, how my mind was deceiving. Step into your power, thrive. Know the sky's not the ceiling. Love comprises the feeling and reminds us we're dreaming. If you vibe with achieving, then we'll rise into healing. Believe. I think it's always good to be able to like look at dreams and be able to practically compare them to uh, this reality. And so how can we understand more about this reality by understanding more about the dream reality? By understanding them through comparison and juxtaposition, I like to open up to the idea that like dreams are closer to the place where we're actually from. And obviously I'm kind of preaching to the choir here, but it basically reflects the idea that like this body is a vehicle. So it's a consciousness itself that exists within the dream state, which exists kind of between death and between life as well. First of all, meditation, and second of all, dream journal, and then third would be continuing to bring more awareness into this present state. So that includes things like reality checks, so I mean, okay, right, maybe I just didn't believe that I could fly high enough. The key of soul. Soul stands for subject, object, location. So subject, you are the subject. Object, okay, you know, like where am I? I'm holding a microphone, is this a microphone? Maybe if it was a dream, it'd be a banana or something like that, right? And then like location, okay, I'm like with some people. Like this is really peculiar, like this doesn't happen very often. Like I'm not totally convinced that this isn't a dream right now, is my point, right? And neither should you be. Because if you bring that curiosity into all of the moments that we're always experiencing, then that curiosity continues over into the dream state, which is what you want. Last key is a really, really important one for what I just said, and that is a shift from the warrior to the guardian. We're still holding warrior, like the fight against the warrior that's fighting something outside of ourselves, an enemy, a something to make change in the world. The guardian is a steward for. The guardian shows up and says, I stand for this. This is what I'm here for. I want to see millions of people in the street rallying around our solutions. What am I here for? What am I inspired by? What am I making a change? We're just taking a stand. And it's that stewardship. Not against, but for. So that's a big key to start noticing in your life when you feel like you have to defend anything. An embodied leader arrives to the place of because I have practiced this self-love and these practices, because I have connected to my community and people who support me, because I have made actions every day to walk in the world on the direction I'm heading, I'm gonna stand in this place of being a guardian, but nothing outside of me, my own divine sovereign authority, nothing outside of me has power. So there's, there's nothing I need to fight. I just need to stand and put my hands in the dirt, you know, put my voice out, my writing, my arms to hug and hold, whatever that is that you're in guardianship of, that's a big shift that if a lot of us made, would shift the way that we feel inspired and empowered to show up and take action from that place of like, this is how much I love what I love. That is a revolution. That's a social change that I'm looking forward to each one of you being in the street with me for the greatest global dance party that ever existed while we celebrate our inherent power and our divine sovereign authority with our friends who've been on this path with us, keeping us on track. And we're just like, I stand up for justice and peace. I stand up for healthy food and soil and sea. I stand up for clean water and I dance in the street to celebrate and I've got the pathways and the action to make those things happen. I'm not looking for my government to solve it. I'm solving it with my friends, with my community, every day in my own life, one step at a time. That's revolution. Michael, do you know why it is that we train? Do you know why it is that we fight?
<laughs> it's so that we can learn, so that we can learn how to never need to fight again. That's it. So once upon an illusion called time, reality created a situation for itself, where it made it forget what it was, its inherent connection to light, fractals, sacred geometry, infinity, the interconnectedness of all things that we are. Yet in the process of forgetting, it created a new opportunity to learn and remember things in a brand new way that it had never done before. And in a lot of ways, that's what this dream is. This dream is an experience that we created for ourselves simply so that we can have an environment to remember in an infinite amount of unique and different ways. No one else will live your life in the way that you will live it. No one else will experience this reality in the way that you experience it. Your reality is the one that you choose to create for yourself. And when you understand what you came here to remember, that thoughts create, that you're connected to all things, and that all of us is a reflection of the whole, things get a little bit more exciting. Life becomes the festival of lucidity. Congratulations for being here. Even if you think you're fully awake, you still have more to awaken to, no matter where you are on your path. Just know you're on the path. So, congratulations and welcome.
bottom line is love. Because isn't that what everyone comes here and receives from everyone? There's a level of acceptance that you just don't get anywhere. You could just come, be who you are, create what you want to create, express what you want to express, and there's this level of love and acceptance in everyone's eyes that you walk by that's so magical and so healing and so nurturing. When you find your inner genius, when you find your inner gift, and you give that, you're automatically contributing to the world. And as we each find what is our own gift, we contribute that to the world and we are woven together in this thing that we can't see from where we are at but we can feel that we are all a part of and I think that this is what this whole movement is, is making possible. You know, the gender alchemy, um, the, the rise of the sacred feminine and masculine as co-creators together and so just this constant weaving and reinforcing to establish the boundaries and the containment to allow the flow and the process to keep moving. Like, if we took an aerial shot of this, it would be amazing to see how this like natural mandala is formed and to watch you know people moving like the size of ants and, and just kind of funneling through all these different environments. So I feel like this is one of the most um, unique and awesome concepts in terms of like, you know, building uh, a template that, that offers a lot of, of connection between, you know, between individuals and then between larger groups. I, I feel like it's working on all different levels. And at the festivals like this is where you get to connect and meet each other and drop in. And then you're, you're friends, you're family for life. And that's just gold. That's just golden as well as knowing who you are and supporting each other and being a stand for each other's power and greatness and celebration. So as we get filled by these festivals, we get filled in our soul because we're also reconnecting with our soul family. Because as you come more and more, you begin to meet and realign with the soul family that came here at this point to evolve and be on this planet and the, help with the shift that's happening now and we all have our certain roles. This is really a spiritual journey for everyone. On the macrocosm level, it's consciousness raising for the whole culture in many, many ways. And on a personal level, it's extremely transformational. And it's as much as you want to go into it, there it shows up for you. The broad spectrum that makes this really unique, diverse splash called this festival is these individual points of light that are all bringing their personal gift forward. And, and I feel like that's going to ripple, and it already has it ripples through the whole, the whole planet. And we need each other right now. We need each other. Like it's not negotiable, the interconnectivity uh, of all of us. We're, we're realizing it again, we're remembering we're remembering that we are deeply connected and whatever is keeping us in a story of separation, the dis-ease in our culture, in our hearts, um, I feel that is being mended here with this opportunity to come and be welcomed and be invited to the table and express yourself and do it with a lot of love and a lot of inspiration. So, thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you all for listening. Good job, you guys. Thank you. The, uh, the dream is coming to an end for now. <laughs> Any message for uh, our dreamers who are awakening out there? Just remember that you are everything you need to be. Oh. Cool. Short and sweet, I like it. Hang it up. Congratulations. Whoa. Glad I showed up with you. A wizard arrives precisely when you're dead, Exactly. And I am a wizard. I know you Hence why someone gave me this. I Coincidentally. Know do you know who I am? I do. Can you tell me who I am? Not yet. Well, I can tell you that you're an archivist. There's a really important role right now in showing the reflective lens that we can see ourselves, that we can remember. It's a mirror. And you're archiving it and you're telling the story with these future generations that will hear this call, this story, be the storytellers that share how the revolution, the re evolution of the human species came to pass. 
most important thing that I can ask you to do is to find out who you are. To allow yourself to open up to the source, to the holographic matrix, to the divine spark, whatever you want to call it, whatever works for you. Connect with that in whatever way you can and allow yourself to come into that knowing that things are where they need to be in order to get to where you are going. It's very important right now to tell this story and not just to have the story told here, but the relevance of that story being told for many, many years. Many, many hearts that need to know that this is happening, that have other stories being told too often. But this story is the story that will bring about the hope that uh, heals the apathy, that reawakens people's remembrance of the fact that we inherently have empowerment within us. This is an incredibly important tool. Storytelling, the new mythos. Yeah, so I see you, Archivist. <laughs> and I see the way that that weaves this magic into the world. You know, changing alchemists, changing lead to gold through people's experience of something they can connect to. It touches their hearts and it inspires them you know, to make changes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you again. Yeah. The biggest thing that I can't give it to you no one else can give it to you but it's the most important thing that will change everything and that's consistency so when i talked about meditation and when i talk about taking a dream journal and bringing that into your practice and when i talk about like questioning reality as much as you can within every moment and that might be something as simple as bringing it back to the breath the breath is the one constant you know breath is a tool we can use so i mean every time you bring your awareness back to your breath bring your awareness back to the question of whether or not this is a dream within itself right so bring consistency into your practice, and uh, yeah, that involves a lot of willpower, but that's where communities like this help each other. But as we sort of work together, the more that we can awaken within the dream state, the more that we can awaken within this state, and that's really what we're here to do, right? We're here to uh, wake up, I think, so. Yeah. Yeah. May this universe give us plenty of mountains to climb, and the strength to climb them many hands to grab onto to help us when we need help. As many as we need. As many as we need. Because the flow is heaven sent from the benevolent divine cosmos. This is the free flow for this people. If you got something to say, step up on this people and take this talking shit from my hand. I'm only a reflection of you telling you what's written in the sands of time. The land of divine is inside of our shrine. So when we align to the perfection of the reflection, of perception, of perception, no rejection. And no deception, this conception is election. Two, the truest that we can feel and express from the heart center. No more dark winter, this was spring of 2013. The spring of 2013, we bring the dream to reality, erase the line between space and time. And we're here to speak that. I come from Ohio, I don't even know about your weed sack or your medical, emphatical, emphatical awesomeness. So thank you for this awesome bliss and the awesome kiss of your soul's messages merging with mine and making me whole, taking the toll. Breaking the mold. Someone take this thing. Somebody. Anybody. This idea of coming together in tribal convergence, in ceremony, is nothing new. In fact, it's the oldest thing that we have. It's the ties that keep us together. The web which weaves through all of us. It makes us stronger. It makes us wiser. It makes us happier. For those of us here, it's part of our infinite mission to expand this single moment into a lifestyle, to a life habit, to a life energy that will be shared and continuously expanded out into this world. We are the fractal nature of the universe. We are the branches that stem from the single seed as we continue to spiral and unfold into the future together. One try of the heart. So all said and done, 
This story is more than just about a pinecone. It's about us. It's about where we have been, where we are now, and where we are going as we continue to awaken within this dream. This is a story that is close to my heart, which is why I am going to continue to do my part as it unfolds by documenting it, living it, and returning to this festival again in the years to follow. Something that I invite and encourage you to do as well, so we can collectively document where we as consciousness are at those future moments of space and time. Step by step, day by day, we are all on this journey together. Yeah. 